The Star Citizen universe is vast, set hundreds of years in the future in a large galaxy filled with unique creatures. With millions of individuals and hundreds of groups vying for power, it's easy to get lost. And that's where I come in. This is Galactic Historian. A Citizen's Guide to Lore. Welcome to Galactic Historian. This is a series of videos and broadcasts where I cover the lore of sci-fi and space games and other content. This is a series of videos I call A Citizen's Guide to Lore, where I help get new players into the lore of the verse. I often get asked about what can be done in game. While there are many generic answers one could give, I wanted to give new players the context of what they can do and the places they can do them in. This is mainly because as the game develops, Various factions might butt heads, and whom you have a reputation with might give you an advantage or put you in danger. For that reason, I'm going to cover the people and factions you come across in the first system in the game, the Stanton system. In 2903, the UEE was gifted the coordinates to this system. However, when they arrived, they discovered that it was already inhabited. Independent miners, smugglers, and homesteaders had already set up shop. Seeing the value in the system, with its three large terraformable planets and a dozen moons, the UEE pushed out the squatters and claimed the system for themselves. However, because of the economy, there was very little interest in terraforming and colonizing new planets. This left the UEE with a problem. They were maintaining expensive bases in the system to prevent squatters from returning, but couldn't sell the land to recoup their losses. This is when ArcCore approached the Senate with a proposal. They had been lobbying to get their own planet in order to produce their dangerous and environmentally damaging fusion reactors for years. They proposed the sale of each of the planets to various corporations as a means to get quick cash and reduce the strain of the military to patrol the system. While not everyone liked this idea, it was seen as the best short-term solution to the problem. Thus, the four planets were sold to the four biggest corporate entities in the Empire. Hurston Dynamics, Crusader Industries, ArcCore, and Microtech. Each of these companies would bring with them their own culture, which would leave a lasting impact on the system and the factions that would rise within them. Now that we understand the background of this system, let's look at each of the factions and the major players of each planet, starting with the closest planet to the star, Hurston. Hurston is owned by the Hurston family, who also owns Hurston Dynamics, a weapons manufacturer with a sordid past. They have a bad reputation for exploiting the needs of desperate people while also having little regard to the environment. As a result, there are more than a few resistance movements from within the company and from without. You're most often going to deal with Hurston Dynamics through their bounty and mercenary missions, from hunting down pirates and smugglers in space to clearing out rebels who routinely capture Hurston's underground facilities. With enough reputation, you'll be contacted by a member of the Hurston family itself, one of the younger members and junior outsourcing executive named Constantine Hurston. He is the latest in a long line of the family expected to work his way from the bottom of the corporate ladder to the top. As such, he calls on you to complete contracts in receiving sensitive materials and other contracts which Hurston tasks trusted outsiders with. He is found inside the Lordville Business District, just overlooking the exchange. For those more interested in the gray area of the law, you can find work with Clovis Darnelli, who works out of the Reclamation and Disposal Area of the Workers District of Lorville. Proving your ability to do more shadier contracts around Stanton will get his attention, often to retrieve information or sensitive and experimental materials from down satellites. Lastly, there is the opposition, known as Ex Malo, who gives missions to clear out the underground facilities controlled by Hurston Dynamics to allow for the rebellion against the corporation to attempt to take control of the planet. There is another figure, for now in the shadows, whom you might interact with. His name is Shaw, and his connections run throughout the entire Stanton system but most prominently in the drug trade. Next, we'll talk about the second planet in the system, Crusader. Controlled by the shipbuilding megacorporation Crusader Industries, this gas giant was partially terraformed, allowing for a breathable atmosphere in the top layers of clouds, where a floating city has been built. So far, the city, known as Orison, is unreachable in-game. However, Crusader Industries still offers contracts to clear out outlaws headquartered in the nearby moon of Yella and collect bounties on local criminals causing chaos. 
In direct opposition to Crusader Industries, we have the once abandoned mining station of Grimhex. Grimhex was once the central hub where miners from the asteroid belt around the moon of Yella would find beds, equipment, and entertainment. Once it was abandoned, squatters took over, refitting the station and allowing the local syndicates to use it as a base of operations. Out of this old station, you can find a shady figure working within these criminal enterprises known as Rudo. Rudo will only contact you once you have become well-known criminal in the system, proving to him that you might have what it takes to complete his less-than-legal work. Even still, he doesn't expose himself to you. Instead, operating out of a hollow projector and a rundown shop on the station, Rudo offers everything from transporting drugs and dead bodies to kill and retrieve missions. All of these are in support of the local syndicates of the system, like the Ninetales and, perhaps even, the Otoni. There's another figure of note in the station, Luca Brunt, who organizes the races in the Grimhex racetrack. However, he's currently not available as the racetrack is still shut down. Next, we have the outlaw dwarf planet of Delamar. This is actually located in the Nyx system in lore, but it is believed that the mission givers currently there will reside in a similar station in the asteroid belt called the Aaron Halo that separates the two inner planets from the outer two. The settlement of Levski was formed in a former mining facility abandoned during the Mezer era. Refugees took up residence and formed the anti-Mezer government group known as the People's Alliance. As a result, there is very little support of the UEE from these anti-government radicals, even after the fall of the Mezers. There are quite a few opportunities for aspiring pilots in Levski. The person keeping the ore flowing through this crumbling mining settlement is arguably Reko Battaglia. She is one of the easiest contacts to get early on, as she is in need of pilots to transport ore samples all over the system. A more shady pilot can get missions from the owner and operator of the PMC called Eckhart Security, Miles Eckhart. He is always looking for skilled pilots who are interested in off-the-books missions to take out targets. However, if you're a criminal looking for work, in the bowels of the station you will find a pale, skinny man by the name of Wallace Klim. Wallace works with people like Shaw on Hurston, coordinating the drug trade throughout the Stanton. In the outer planets, we have Art Corp, the megacity planet owned by the company that shares the name. This super-industrial planet is the home of dozens of different companies. So, as a result, most of the missions you can acquire in the system go through contractors like Blackjack Security, who work with Art Corps to help keep the peace. There is one person, however, for those who walk the path of the criminal can find work from. Tizia Twitch Pacheco is a former Blackjack Security officer who had an accident and was fired. As a means of revenge, she joined the notorious criminal enterprise named the Otoni Syndicate, direct competitors to Klim and Shaw in the drug trade of the system. Her more aggressive style will have you do more than just transporting drugs. She will have you upending rivals and clearing out their caches before security arrives. As a result, she is one of the more profitable mission givers in the game, but she will only talk to you once you have been proven to be a killer for hire around Art Corps. Lastly, we have the fourth and coldest planet in the system. Like all the others, it is named after the company that purchased it 40 years ago, Microtech. Microtech started out making its name producing high-end computers for ships. However, it is most well-known for making the smartphone of the future, the Moby Glass. The planet itself was ideal for the manufacturer, as it is the coldest in the system. This is due to a miscalculation with the terraforming process. These ideal conditions allowed their powerful computers, which they used to help them manufacture and develop new technologies, run at peak efficiency. It also meant that the main city of the planet, New Babbage, is the only dome city in the system. The planet's not just the home of Microtech, but a mecca for many tech companies from all over the verse, creating a futuristic Silicon Valley on the planet. In the city, there is one confirmed mission giver, a colleague of Clem and Shaw, named Eddie Parr. Parr is the bartender at the popular local bar named Wally's Bar. He is, of course, inferior to the much better, more handsome, and way cooler bartender, Paul Shelley, but I digress. Eddie may offer you similar support missions for the drug traders of the system, maybe even in opposition of the Otoni Syndicate. Details are, however, scarce until he's introduced when Microtech arrives in the game. So, that is a general overview of the factions and mission givers of the game thus far. The game is still developing, so many of the details may change, but I hope this gives you an idea of the types of people you can work for, locations you can go to, and companies you can help. 
It is also important to remember that many of these groups may be in active opposition to one another, so be careful for whom you work for, or you might just end up on the wrong side of a railgun. This has been a second part of our Citizen's Guide to Lore. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you enjoyed this, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this for Star Citizen and other universes. Consider supporting Galactic Historian on Patreon. For as low as $5 a month, you can help videos like these come to life. With your help, we can grow the channel and get more people in the know about the lore of Star Citizen and other universes. Until next time, remember, ex historia ad astra.